I'm Dr. Gloria Lattimore Peace, host and producer of OmniU Presents, the H3O Art of Life show. My guest today for this show, which is entitled Hollywood or History Part 2, The Rebirth of a Nation, question mark. My guests are Hunter Havilland Adams III and Attorney Jack Childs, Kwabana, <laughs> Jack Childs. Mm -hmm. And I'm very happy to greet you. And I'm going to say an African saying. It's not a saying, actually, but it's something that I've heard, I think you've heard. I want to frame this by opening with that and then I want to go straight to Hunter because I want him to flesh out the framework with the four stories. Told you to be prepared, are you? Oh yeah, I'm here. All right, okay. Just <laughs> want, you to, want you to have the four stories with you. Yeah. All right. What happened to the people of Sumer? The people of Sumer? They lost their history, so they died. And someone else claimed it. That is a saying that I read in one of the Yikwe Arma's books. Mm -hmm. What happened to the people of Sumer? They lost their history, so they died. Hollywood or history is a discussion about the value, the essential nature of history, not his story, but our story, the story that we must always know and that we must always tell. The griot's function in the African community was to recite their history. They'd call a griot, they would call the griot, and the griot would come and recite to the people their history. And the people knew their history. And if the griot should make an error, he might be anywhere from lightly penalized to severely punished because the t people treasured their history. We must feel the same way about our history. When our history is in the hands of other people whose motives are, one of whose motives is profit, whatever else the others are, it's out of our hands and it has an intent other than just to keep us alive. The Sumer, Sumerians forgot their history, and so they died. So, you know, we heard all the sayings about a people without history is like a tree without roots. Mm -hmm. A tree without roots cannot live, cannot continue, cannot perpetuate, cannot reproduce. So we must be very zealous about our history. So I want you to tell the audience about the four stories, what the possibilities of the stories are that are told. Well, the, f the four stories um, that uh, I talk about in many of my writings 
actually was a article, comes from an article written by um, a political psychologist by the name of Weston, uh, I think it's James Weston. Uh, and he wrote this in 2008 at the time then candidate Barack Obama was running for the presidency of the United States. And he was concerned that uh, Mr. Obama, Senator Obama, was not getting his message out to the people. So he wrote this article in the Huffington Post uh, 2008 to help his team frame his message better. And so he talked about the notion of there are four stories to any message grid. Actually, there's more than that, and I'll come back to that. The first story, Dr. Peace, is the story you or your people, your ethnic group, or your religious group uh, tell yourself about yourself. And that story tends to be positive. You want to embellish the beautiful things about yourself, about your community. Then there's story number two, and the story number two is a story you tell yourself about your opposition, your competitor, your adversary, someone who's not like you, another ethnic group, someone who lives in another geography, right? So that's story number two. Story number three is a story your opponent, your adversary, your competitor tells themselves about themselves to themselves. And so that story also is going to be positive, that they're going to hold themselves up in a positive light. The fourth story is a story that your adversary, competitor, so forth and so on, the other tells themselves about you. That story is going to be negative. So in politics, anyone, any candidate running for office, when they're doing commercials, what are they going to do? They're going to tell negative stories about their opponent, about their competitor. Why? Because our brains are sensitive to negative news. We will remember negative news, negative stories faster because it evokes different kinds of emotions, right? And so they want to be sure to get the message out that's going to damage their opponent. Then later on in the campaign, they'll do positive stories about themselves, right? Because now it's been, studies been shown that barrage of negative news, well, then the appeal of that candidate will go down. But there's a fifth story. The fifth story is the backstory. It sets the context, the framework with which all of these four stories operate out of. So Barack Obama's team did not have control over the message. Whoever controls the message controls the outcome because they have framed the picture for the consumer to consume. They have framed the history, attorney childs, that becomes the story, the correct story. So you grow up, you hear the story, Sumer is gone. Okay, you don't know anything else because that's what you're, you've been taught. That's what we've learned. I grew up learning those kinds of stories. You did. We all did. And they're lies. They're fabrications. You know, as Dr. Anderson Thompson would talk about, um, you know, our beloved friend, mentor, you know, teacher and so forth. It's histo historiography. You know, that they package the facts that elites decide are valuable and then they put it out there for people to consume. And so for Hollywood, right, they package many different stories. There's a movie coming out on November 
23rd called Akhenaten. Mm. And Akhenaten is a white guy. He mm. looks white. Nefertiti is white. The Kemetic people <laughs> look white. It's going to be in theaters all over the country. Why? Because they have control over the message grid. You can't complain about this. Well, you can, but it's not going to make a difference. You can't change that because we don't have control over the message. If you can green light a film, and I don't know how many African Americans in the movie industry can green light a film that can just say, okay, go or no go. There's very few women, white women particularly, who can green light a film. That's why Brad Pitt and Matt Damon started their own company, so Plan B, so they could green light films of budding filmmakers because they knew Hollywood isn't going to do it. Just because you win an Oscar, that doesn't mean your career is just going to take off. We've seen how many African Americans won Oscars and their career just plummeted after that. They didn't get any roles. I have to intervene here. So let me stop. Yeah, I have to help you stop. Because in those four stories, or even that fifth story, there's a missing, missing element. That missing element is the story that your adversaries tell other people. That's the sixth story. I didn't come to that yet, but you, I'm glad you, you brought you that came up. To a, you came to a, you stopped there, so I just need to go there. Right. I That's need good. The, that, that is the subject matter here today. The story that your adversaries not only tell themselves, but they tell others about you, which is the most um, damaging of all the stories, or at least it's of equal damage to the stories that they tell you, which get you, give you false impressions of who you are. Right. It's very important because here you have an industry that is telling our story. And because we don't have griots who will finish books and put them out there so we can read them right away, and that's, that's you know, that's a gentle hint to my <laughs> friend here who, who, who has something that we need in the book that you're writing. Because we don't have griots who are frequently giving us lessons in our history, reciting our history, because we are not seeking out the history that has already been recorded by the griots who have passed on, who have left behind records of our history. Mm -hmm. Because we are not pursuing our history and not treasuring it and dil being diligent about it, then other people are telling us our story and then we're getting into disputes over whether we like the story, whether we don't like the story, mm -hmm. whether or not the story is accurate, whether or not people ought to stop complaining about this aspect or that aspect of the story. We get into decoy issues that have nothing to do with anything except what are the implications of other people telling your story right. to you and about you to the world to other people. Now that's my two cents. Jack, you got four cents, I know. Well, yes, I do. Number one, I appreciate the explanation you just gave about who's telling the story. But to get down to brass tacks, okay. this movie Harriet, in my humble opinion, this is a great movie. I find nothing Did wrong with that Harriet? movie. But I'm just saying, okay. Harriet is a, a source of controversy. 
Okay. I went to a birthday party. Okay. And people were discussing Harriet. Okay. okay. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. I went to the movie. I saw it. Okay. It was a great movie. Why was it a great movie? First of all, it had a black woman director who is a professional. She put that movie together in precise terms. I have a degree in history. First of all, a movie, if it's not a biopic or a documentary, is not a work of historical accuracy. This is a dramatization of a historical figure. Now, what I would look for in a movie like that, do they disparage one of my heroes? Harriet Tubman is a hero of mine. No, they didn't disparage the sister. They showed the sister in a strong light. She could not be bent. She could not be bowed. She was not afraid. Now, if a kid goes and sees that, especially a young black female child, what are they going to come away with? Wow, she bucked the odds. She got away from the slave catchers. She went 100 miles over rough terrain. Is that bad? Now, the ch chief thing, going back to what you talk talking about, everybody got their the two bits and two cents. There is a character in the movie, a black man, who is on the side of the white people. That's historically accurate. It's accurate today. I challenge anybody looking at this program to go find somebody who has a COINTEL profile, because I've seen them, and look at all the redactions. The redactions are all the black people snitching the on the other black people. That's the subject of the report. And this is why I said that's a decoy issue. Right. But it's, it's real. No, no. The decoy issue mm -hmm. is telling, is, is getting caught up in your opinion and my opinion about a story that is being told through the auspices. What's the backstory, Hunter? Who can green who to who can green light the movie? Right. Right. Through the office. Uh, obviously, right. obviously, that is not something that I revere. And you know, just to speak to just one thing. Mm -hmm. And perhaps it, it may be the, the feminine lens that's looking at this. Mm -hmm. You have a character. You talk about, you know, black people betraying other black people. Mm -hmm. We know this. But the script, the lines, I'm doing this mm -hmm. so I will have money for the white whores. What's that saying? To me, it's saying that here is someone who values white women over his own women. Now that, that says that at first because he said that. And then when he stomps, when he stomps a black woman to death, that tells me something about the hatred that accompanies his love of white women is his hatred of black women and probably has implications for saying how he felt about himself. That's right. That, for me, is not a good image to have anybody see. I don't think black women like to think that they are so despised by their own men that they will kill them, but that they will sell out the whole race for a white. I don't think that's a good thing. And I don't think it's something that when you point out that the mind will absorb negativity much faster, faster than it does positive. When you get through having Harriet running through 100 miles through rough terrain and running all the risks and jumping in the river and all of that, when you get through doing all that, you are not going to forget that this black man said those things and this black man did those things. So I'm saying that my focus here is to try to be on 
whether or not we want Hollywood or history and what do we value our history enough not to want our history. Harriet Tubman's story ought to be a documentary. It ought, it should have been, but, but somebody it wasn't. can do it. But so, so it, 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 you pointed but, that out, and I understand. Right, but it's see, it's not a doc documentary. But see, let's get down to brass tacks. Right now, today, we got a bunch of black guys shooting black people in the street. But that ain't what I'm talking about. But it is because no, that black man in that movie, which was well crafted by the director, met a horrendous fate at the hands of the people that he chose to be on their side. And that's illustrative of, hey, if you get against us, something bad gonna happen to you. That's what that stands for. And what about all the stuff in the but movie where she's loving her husband? What? This black man and woman. What about all of this? Yeah. What about our history, which is what I'm here to discuss? Hollywood or history? You can't, you cannot say that Hollywood ought to be entrusted to tell our story. You cannot say that you prefer Hollywood over history, especially not if you are a student of history. That's not the issue. That's, but that's, that's, that's a different, that's, that's a, different a different question. Thing. That's not the issue. The issue for me is whether or not we treasure our history to the extent that we want to know it. We want it to be revealed to us. We want it to be, want it to be the truth. We want it to be, we want it to be, um, what is it you say when we tell the story to ourselves? To it, ourselves, we want about it to ourselves, be positive. It'll, it'll, be, it'll be truthful and authentic. It'll be truthful and it will be positive. There's That's, a whole not, lot to be but, said But about also that. honest because um, there are some skeletons in, in our closets in our history. So you can't just have all positive things that we've done. I mean, folks don't want to talk about how the Mali Empire came, came about. You know, that was, there was some ruthlessness that right. took place there. Right. So well, do you ever want the backstory? Do you want to know how this person could grow up to be this person because right. certainly you would not want to condone or encourage or incubate that kind of behavior. So if you can trace that behavior to its roots, where do we get a bigger long who will so revere women of another race and so despise women of his own race. But he paid where, a price with his life, though. That's but right. the that, point that, that's, is, where do that we... That was most important to me. No, is that what's most important, what ought to be most important is how not to raise a big along. How, what, in, what in the social system in which we live can, can help us to create or can create that kind of... Well, now we, we run into a whole other thing <laughs> because, right. because we don't have control over our social system. That's right. Our social system is controlled so by oligarchs. No, we, we're not helpless. Okay. We don't have a social theory that can That's guide right. us well, in how... Well, always talk on that. Now well, we both been talk, we talk okay. that, <laughs> you know, to guide There's us in how to make theory. more adaptive decisions in our best interests, right? We don't control Hollywood, right? We don't do that. We don't, we, we don't have the funds to green light movies and those billionaires or with hundreds of millions of dollars, they haven't worked out a system right. to develop to green light films and distribute them. It's easier now to do that with the internet because you know, you can put something together. Some folks, a brother and sister just did that in Nigeria. Right. Right, they were running a small um, soap opera in Nigeria, right? And eventually, yeah. it got so big they raised so much money. Now, now Netflix is picking up their piece because well, it's about money, and that's 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 right. What you said, Hollywood. Hollywood is in the business of making entertainment for money for their shareholders, That's right? right? Mm -hmm. 
oftentimes there's in the framework of this society, this, this, this society, right? So the history part, if we want to tell our story ourselves, we got to do it ourselves and find creative ways to get the message out. But when you're in Hollywood, you're working right. with the constraints of that system. You're working with budgetary constraints, casting constraints, all kinds of cons constraints. And I thought this sister did a marvelous job under those constraints. Right. With Steven and originally, Spielberg originally, done a movie like that. Originally, Julia Roberts was going to be cast for Harriet Tubman. That's because the man didn't know there was a black woman that they were talking about. <laughs> Come on now, don't Julia start Roberts. her. Right, <laughs> right. And no, that, that yeah. speaks to your point about the importance of history. That, that the story hasn't gotten out to the broadest context of this country. That's what I want There's to talk There's ignorance about. here. Right. Manufactured, cultivated I ignorance. I want to talk about an institution in which a future fugitive slave captive. was thought to, well, fugitive slave is the term, and the ca we know them as captives. We know that they were captives and not slaves. I, I don't use the word. But the thing is, when, when they were talking about fugitives, right. they were calling them fugitive slaves. Right. Okay. That's all I'm doing is using right in that the, time. The, 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 the term. But they actually diagnosed them as having an illness. It's either called drapetomania That's or it. droptomania. That's it. Drapetomania. I've seen it pronounced two different ways. But the thing mm -hmm. is, that if, if, if a captive wanted to run away, seek freedom, they were mentally disturbed. They had a mental disorder. In the other people's story. And I was saying, I'm saying that this is, this, no, this was, this was history. That their was, history, their story that they wrote. But, what but I'm the saying, people who were running saying, away, they didn't think that they were crazy. They, no, I'm not saying that at all. What right. I'm saying is that they treated this as though it was a mental disorder, that it was, there was something wrong with you if you didn't want to submit to the authority and be under the, the absolute control of other people. So that, you know, this Chief we, Justice Taney said the same thing, that black people are beings of an inferior yeah, order. order. I'm, not, I'm not disputing no, that. No, I'm agreeing with okay. you. That's, that's so, so here we are in, in a system where not only are we suppressed, oppressed, but also if we want to escape that condition, then we are mentally ill and require the most, the harshest punishment, beatings. You know, you have to beat the, this notion out. And of course, lynching, you have to destroy, you don't want to destroy your property if you don't have to, but you will destroy your property rather than have it dis be disobedient and, and actually have the nerve to confront you and to, to to disobey you in a way that they know you would disapprove and that you've got to spend money now to go out and try to find them and haul them back to where they belong. So it's just, when we, we need to understand the system. We needed to understand that people, that the people who were captives weren't fully dressed in decent clothes, but they were wearing croca sacks, you know, that they had, the, the, the remnants of clothing. They didn't have clothing. They didn't walk away from a prayer meeting toward houses. You, you know, saw that in the movie. That's what I'm saying. We don't need to think that these people were walking around wearing decent clothes, going back to decent houses, and running away from those houses, you know, with, with, with you know, fully dressed and capable of running away because they haven't been worked from sun up to sundown and this sort of thing. I'm saying, I don't think we got, we getting from these pictures, 12 years of slave, Harriet, whatever you call it, I don't think we, we're getting what captivity was like. It was not like Beloved. 
you know, Beloved gave you some stuff to see, you know, where they put the bit or in a man's mouth Uncle Tom. and made him and made him pull a plow like a horse. You know, we need to understand captivity because when the Jewish people tell their story, they tell their story in such a way that their young people or their progeny don't want that story repeated. That's because they're social. Now, I have to, I have to disagree. Well, you because can't because disagree. movies show the contradictions, the uh, bondage that we went through was a contradiction. Not every slave had a bit in their mouth. They had slaves that worked in the house that had good clothes. That's a fact. But that doesn't take away from the fact that the you system. were a, 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 a system under bondage. That is a fact. Not all slaves were raggedy and tattered. They had slaves that actually drove around and didn't run away on buggies and did errands for massa. We have to come to grips with that because the system is a mental system. Just like today, there's nothing different. The form is different, but the mental state is the same. We can't see past the trees because- You're not disagreeing with me. Ancestor Francis Wilson said, we must get in touch with the truth. We don't tell the truth. The truth is we ain't never been free. And We're not free now. Uh, look, I'm, we are not in disagreement, now, Jack Charles. Yeah. You're not on the show because I disagree with you. Right, but I'm just saying. I didn't bring you here I, to disagree I, I, with you. I'm not you. nitpicking these little things that people want to nitpick. I'm saying that you have to look at a movie from this vantage point. Listen, I look at a movie and see a man with a horse and a gun right. who is a captive who ain't running away himself. And Because that's, that was the most striking thing is that you are helping to catch people who are running away and you got all the means for running away. You got a weapon, you got, you got a vehicle, and you got, a, you got as much a reason to run away as this, this person who is running away, except that you getting your gratification as white horse. He didn't have the courage to He didn't, to ha seek he didn't have the desire because he was getting what he wanted. I want to know if we, I want to, I don't want to know because I can't know from that. I want to know if we can get to the bottom of these issues that are raised in these various and sundry entertainment pieces, if we can determine if we in fact have those people among us and if we in fact are producing those people how do it's we not we producing that? them? The well, society that well, we live in. Well, yeah. Tell me about the social theory then. Let's talk to me about how you don't have a community in which those things are possibilities. Oh, they're possibilities. There's possibilities. For sure. I said, tell me, yeah. talk to me about how you can have a community in which those things are not possibilities where you don't have a situation where, as, as Harriet said, I could have rescued more of them yeah. if they had known they were slaves. Now, you don't like the word slaves, but that's, what, that's supposed to be a direct quote from right. Harriet, that she could have freed, helped more of them become free if they had realized that they were captives. Now, you were saying yeah. that we are not free now. No. And we don't know we're not free. Ain't nobody trying to run nowhere. Right. You know, ain't nobody trying to escape nothing. Well, and when we did have people that advocated alternatives, they were scoffed and laughed at, uh, like the, the brothers and sisters from the Republic of New Africa. They said, give us some land. We'll do our own thing. Mm -hmm. And Hunter has a book right here when uh, Sherman asked his brother, well, what do y'all want to do? Right after he had ravaged Georgia. Harrison Frazier. And, and the brother said, uh, we would like to get some land and basically get away from y'all. We don't need to be with y'all. The animal Elijah Muhammad did that. Yeah. He, he, he asked for four or five states. 
Just yeah. let us be over yeah. there. That's right. He did. He did. And actually had farms. Right. Built. In, they called it the Nation of Islam, and they behaved like a nation. Had all kind of businesses, farms and everything, growing their own cattle, right. had their own supermarket, Fish. all of this. Yeah. They started poisoning the cattle. You know, in other words, they would not let them. But like that's the been people a continuing Waco, story. They would not let those people separate. They all them people want to do is because go because they needed to keep the economy going. Talk to me about how the value of the captive Africans in 1865, in today's terms, is billions of dollars. It was more than the actual land upon which they were working. Right. That's the value, the economic value. In the movie, one of the most critical scenes in Harriet was when the plantation owner's wife was out there to have an hysterical because, because they, they got to pay get, right. the other plantation owners because their captives were seeking freedom and they were losing money and they couldn't pay the mortgage and said, we got to come up with a plan to get our captives back. Right. And so that was, that scene was very important because it was showing right. people the relationship and the value of the captives to the whole system, mm -hmm. which people call capitalism. Mm -hmm. You know, that was very, very important. That wasn't done in any of the other movies, 12 Years a Slave. You didn't see that stated so clearly and concisely, right. visually, that was important. The last thing, when she caught the plantation owner, she shot him in the leg, right? She didn't kill him. She put another psychic level of suffering on him right. by telling him, you don't own me. That was a courageous statement that we have never seen in the film before. For a captive to say to their ostensible owner, you don't own me, God owns me. She affirmed her faith and her trust and her belief. That was a key moment and let him live with that and rode away on his white horse. <laughs> well, that was a power. That was the okay. most powerful thing. Here's another powerful scene. OK. The Union Army standing on one side. The Confederate forces standing on the other side, and they both got guns drawn each on each other. Translate that to now, where you still have the descendants of the Confederate Army. Yeah. They still have guns. Daughters of the Confederacy. The Union Army, led by Harriet, don't have no weapons. They turning their guns in for hundred dollar credit cards. Hmm. What I'm saying is, should that kind of confrontation that's a contradiction? Be, and what's a contradiction? No, I mean you're you're heightening you're you're heightening as we used to say. You remember this in back in right, the day right, right. of okay. heightening the contradictions, right. right? So we can see clearly so you what the see, issues are. What I'm saying is, if you have the conservative mindset that we know exists yeah, in this absolutely. environment, and they feel threatened that that possibility could reoccur. What do you think might be on the minds of conservatives who see us as a threat? They've who always see, seen us as a see, threat. Well, who see us as, who are reminded, because they keep getting told, mm -hmm. their, they're getting told their history while you think we getting told, they're getting told. Listen, we Their used to story. have we used to have these people on a plantation. They used to be working for us for free. We used to be able to pay our mortgages. We used to be able mm -hmm. to live the good life. And mm -hmm. then they started running away. And then they ran away so so Steal so away. so so well that they began to get join armies who were opposed to our way of life. And the next thing we look up, it's a whole slew of them standing out there with guns. That's why I call the second part of this the rebirth of a nation. 
because when Birth of a Nation was shown, you know, that was one of those films that excited, excited the population. Here is this, here are these black men who are menacing white women, you know, and yeah. we've got to protect our women and so forth and so on. You had a whole lot of backlash. You had a whole lot of violence follow that. Mm -hmm. And that's, yeah. the, that's, that's, the impl that's an implication that we cannot overlook because don't think that they are only telling one story when, if you think that story was a story of Harriet, no, there was a whole lot of people sitting in that movie and they were taking a whole lot of things home with them. And one of the things they take home with them is that we still got the Negro problem. Now, ask Andy what the Negro problem is. Yeah, we talked about that. What is the Negro problem? As Sidney Wilhelm says, what are we to do with the Negro? That's right. That's, so you, we, this question, this question is, an, is but I want to reframe that. Okay. What are we going to do about ourselves? Right. Okay. We okay. know what the adversary, our competitors, our formidable opponents okay. think. What are we going to do for ourselves? Okay. How are we going to tell our story to ourselves, to our people, to the world? There's ample opportunity to do that like never before. Like never before. And we see crazy people on YouTube right. talking all kinds of foolishness, but they end up getting 30,000, 50,000, 100,000 subscribers, and they're talking absolute nonsense. But there's others, if you know how to search, you can find gems of truth on YouTube. But it's, there's no coordinate, not, I don't want to say coordinated, there's no coherent thrust to it. It's just individuals wanting their YouTube minutes of fame and getting their name out there but do we and know, making money but because do we, people do make money but from do we YouTube. we know that there are people who are going to the gun range? Do we know that there are people who are training their children to use weapons? Do we know that there are people who have weapons, who are using weapons, who are killing mass murders, you know, who uh, just walk in and blow up a, a, a Walmart or a school or a club or whatever? Do we know that, that, that there, are, there are those who would be violent at the drop of a hat? Do we know that? And that gets back to so the, are we the whole tell point of, this of story? what we're talking about is we do not control the message grid of none of the stories. Oh, right. Lord. Okay. We don't control the message grids. Okay. Some uh, white boy in, in Naperville High School, he, he um, put a picture of a black person, student, and said, wanted, slave wanted, right. dead or alive. And somebody else put, a, put up a, a, an ad, advertising, ad, ad, advertisement to sell right. a black student. But let me get to this right quick okay, for the you, show. I'm gonna let you do the, it. The Black yeah. Tax by Sean okay. Rochester, MBA from University of Chicago, has written this wonderful, great book. Now they have, over the last several years, conducted uh, research on two million people. And in this two million people, they have asked them the critical question. Do you have an explicit anti-black bias? And in 2012, 51% of the people said, I have an explicit anti-black bias. It was 48% in 2008, 47 in, in 2010. Proportion of Republicans, 79% in 2012. Portion of Independents, 48% in 2012. Portion of Democrats, 32% in 2012. Proportion of Americans expressing implicit anti-black attitudes was 56% in 2012, 49% in 2008, 
and 51% in 2010. Proportion of Republicans, 64%, Independents, 49 and of Democrats, 55%. And all I'm suggesting is, Dr. Peace, the truth, as Ancestor Welsing has told us, has not been told. It has never stopped. We do not study the foundational texts of America. The third rail in America is the anti-black rail. Chief Justice Taney, the Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court, articulately stated what the position of them versus us was and has never been overturned. It has been superseded by the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment. But his well, articulation, uh, his articulation. You got one minute to give the decision. It, it, it's, it's fabulous. In his, in his decision, he said, black people were basically subhumans and they are property and they do not deserve even the respect to come before a court and argue as human beings. That's what that stands for, Dred Scott decision. They want to talk about the property part. They don't tell you. And when I went to law school, they did not talk about that other part. They just, you know, edited the case. So all I'm saying is all that documentation is there. We don't have a social theory. We don't get our kids to study the true grit. We don't tell our children the truth. And they've been taking money from us all the time. For instance, slavery was worth $50 trillion. Present value of black labor in 1860, $22 trillion. Homestead Act, which we didn't get, $1.6 trillion. And it goes on and on. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I mean, we're in the same position we were in okay. 1865. And what happened to the people of Sumer? They lost their history. They lost their history. And so they died. And so they died. But we're not going to die. We're going to not just survive, but thrive. I like that. We are an exceptional people. I vote for that. And everywhere in the world, people emulate the black people in America. Hip hop. We don't even like, I bet you all look, three of us, we don't like hip hop. You guys stop being a contradiction over there. You just got through saying we're not free. So why are we're people not. envying people who are not free? Because we are great. Okay. People emulate greatness. You see, when you not free and you great, the story that's being told is you're subhuman, but we're going to image and mimic what you do and make money off of what you do. Okay, I'm, I'm having a hard time with that one, but that, that, you know, you entitle your opinion, not your facts, but your opinion. You can have that. Let me have this book, Hunter. I just want to, this is uh, a biography of Harriet Tubman. I would recommend that everybody who doesn't have a library card get one and everybody who has one use it because we can do ourselves a lot of good by reading yeah. and by knowing uh, the truth to the extent that it can be known. But I would always recommend that you go to our ancestors for our story because our story has been recorded and is in the library and it has known, trusted authors like W.B. Du Bois, like Jacob Carruthers, like um, John Henry Clark, like uh, Yi Kwe Arma, who writes in fiction but writes the truth just the same. There are just any number of authors who have written our history for us um, Asar Hilliard, help me Hunter. Hunter is writing a book, if he will come on and finish it, um, we, it will do a lot toward opening our eyes. But don't expect to know your history if it's coming out of Hollywood. That's all I need to say. I don't care whether the movie is good or not, or you enjoyed it, or this acting was good, or the script was good, or whatever. If it comes out of Hollywood, it is Hollywood's story and not our story. We need to be vigilant in protecting our story. Hotep, 